So using the same graph, you can actually find the range also. Let me consider the case where D is greater than zero and A is positive, right? So two conditions, A greater than zero, D greater than zero. Why am I taking A greater than zero? Because then I know it's upward facing. Those are the two things I need to know. Whether it's upward facing or downward facing, whether the X where is the X axis? So D tells me where the X axis is. A tells me whether it's facing upward or downward. Those are the only two things that I need to know to find out the range of a quadratic equation. You'll realize why. So upward facing, hence I draw my graph this way. D greater than zero, so cuts it at two points. This is my X axis. That's the graph. Let's say this root is alpha, this root is beta. Now it's logical. You tell me where is the polynomial positive? This is nothing but the polynomial AX squared plus BX plus C. Where is it positive? You can see that it's positive here and here. Mathematically, what is that? Here is all places where X is less than alpha. Here is all places where X is greater than beta. So the polynomial is positive when either X is less than alpha or X is greater than beta. Where is it zero? It is equal to zero at X equal to alpha and X equal to beta. And here it's negative, right? It's basically positive here, negative here, positive here. Negative is between alpha and beta. So when alpha less than X less than beta, it is negative. Very simple. I don't need to actually teach you this, right? It's obvious. You look at this graph, you'll get it. So X less than alpha or X greater than beta is nothing but the case where it's positive. When it's equal to alpha and beta, it's zero. Between alpha and beta, it is negative. Now, one cool way of actually writing X is either less than alpha or X is either greater than beta is X minus alpha into X minus beta is greater than zero. Why is that a cool way of writing it? See, it's very simple. I'll tell you why. When X is less than alpha, what will happen? When X is less than alpha, X minus alpha is negative. X minus beta is negative. Negative into negative is positive. Perfect. It's going to be positive. Now, when X is greater than beta, what happens? X minus alpha is positive. X minus beta is also positive. So positive into positive equal to positive. That's why X minus alpha into X minus beta is greater than zero. Great, right? Nothing great actually in what I did. When alpha and beta are the roots of the equation, how will you write the equation? We wrote the equation as AX squared plus BX plus C equal to zero. Right? When alpha and beta are the roots, another way to write the same equation is X minus alpha into X minus beta equal to zero. So that when alpha equal to zero, it becomes zero. When beta is equal to zero, also it becomes zero. So this is nothing but another way of writing the same equation. I did not do any cool math here. It is just another way of writing the same equation. You can write the same polynomial as X minus alpha into X minus beta, which is why we know that the polynomial is positive when X less than alpha and X greater than beta. So that's why X minus alpha and X minus beta greater than zero. It's another way of saying it. It just means polynomial is positive, right? So it's positive in these two parts, zero at these two points and negative here. Now what happens if I move the X axis down such that the X axis just touches it at one point. Now what happens? It is positive entirely, right? The entire polynomial is positive except at this one value, except at this one value where X is equal to minus B by 2A and the value of the polynomial is zero. The value is zero because that's where it touches the X axis. So it's always positive except that X is equal to minus B by 2A where it is equal to zero. Push this up. If X is further down, that is X is not touching the polynomial at all. Then what happens? It is always positive. Right? So in this case, it is always positive. Now, if we have the reverse, this was the case where A was greater than zero and D was also D. We saw all three cases, right? Greater than zero, equal to zero, less than zero. Now, what happens when A is less than zero? Now we have a curve like this. Now, again, we'll draw the X axis when D is greater than zero. Simple, it will be the exact reverse, right? Now what is happening? Here it's negative, here it's positive, here it's negative. So whenever X is less than alpha or X is greater than beta, the polynomial is negative. When it's equal to alpha and beta, again, it's zero. When it is between alpha and beta, it is positive. Exact reverse of what we saw earlier. When the X axis is touching it at one point, it's negative everywhere except at this one point, which is the maximum where X is minus B by 2A. Y is obviously zero. When X axis goes further up, then it's always negative. That's it. So based on the same graph, you can figure out where the polynomial is positive or where it is negative. All you need to do is mark the roots. 
you need to know whether the x axis is cutting it at two points one point or no point it will tell you where the equation is or where the polynomial is positive where is it negative and where is it zero